five countdown. <laughs> you two are getting beat today. Can you not just enjoy the game, Harry? The game isn't about enjoyment, Linda. It's the competition that's so engaging. Ooh, engaging. Good word, Harry. Eight letters. Right, here we go. B, M, I, X, R, E, I, N. Tough letters. Tough for some, Linda. Tough for some. Man, these letters. Linda, please, go on and not read out the letters as they come out. We can all see them, eh? There's not any blind people in here. Not that I can see. Can you judge? Play the game, Harry. Right, when have you got? I've got eight. <laughs> when have you got? My words are better. It's... Good, good. Can you try and contain yourself and not blurt it out so that George can tell me how many he's got? Carry on, George. Same. Eight. All right. So what's your word? My word's Ren Minby. Well, you clam up for just... <laughs> hey, Ren Minby. In the name of hell's Ren Minby. Get lost, you're not getting that. That's uh, what I've got. Eh? Hey? All right. Well, what does it mean then, Linda, Ren Minby? Well, it means the... Uh... Hey, George. George, if you don't mind, just for a wee second. I know you know what it means. Right, Linda, what does Ren Minby mean? Well, I don't know what it means, but I've definitely heard it been used. It's a word. All right, you don't know what it means. Well, that's not exactly good enough, is it? You need to know what the word means. Uh, no, you don't, Harry, uh, as long as it's in the dictionary. Wonder what kind of world it would be if we just went wandering about, eh? Uttering words we didn't know the meaning of. A fairly foolish world, wouldn't it, Linda, eh? Where's my dinky-doo? Oh, it's in the rumbly-bumbly. Oh, by the way, what is a dinky-doo? Oh, I'm not sure, but I know it's a word. Exactly, no points. Renminbi is the currency of the old Republic of China. That's it. Chinese money. Well, that's right. Chinese money. Look at you hoovering that off of George there, eh? <laughs> Taking it as your own. Passing it off as your own information. It is a word. Well, fine. You both have eight points. Fine. <clears throat> what was your word, Harry? Bin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. A receptacle for refuse. Here, receptacle's a great word, Dave. Oh, aye, aye. oh shut up! <laughs> Alibone Station, I'll take that. Ooh, it's you got three stations now, Linda. Linda, gonna no jam the piece into the board like that. Eh? It leaves wee dents on it. Every time we play Monopoly, you always go that iron. You never go the hat, the car, or the wee Scotty Doug. Always the jaggy iron. They're not noticeable, Harry. See, when the designers designed this game, do you think they meant for you to jam that through the soft cardboard like that? Don't answer, because the answer's no. Anyway, it's my goal. Oh, double four. Doublers, yes. <laughs> Pentonville Road. Actually, I own Pentonville Road. £12, please. Ah, she's got you there, Harry. Come on, cough up. I'll have another shot at a double there. Can I get my £12? <sighs> there you've made me lose count now. <laughs> Vine Street. Oh, yes. One hotel on Vine Street. Let me just get my card, see what that is. I'm still waiting on my £12. For God's sake, you're like a broken record there. Will you just wait a minute? The man is trying to calculate how much I owe him. Carry on, George. £1,000, Harry. Right, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Three pounds short, George. Yeah, just geese it when you pass, go. I'm still waiting on my 12 You're short now, George. Harry. Carry on, George. Harry. What is it? I'm still waiting on my... I know, £12! Just wait a minute. Are you blind? Can you not see I've just given the guy big money? A thousand pounds, big money. Well, it's 997. You still owe him three. And he'll get it when I pass go, just like you'll get your 12 poxy pounds when I pass go. You should have paid me before you paid him. Then you boot the game. Oh, well, that's charming, isn't it? Well, I tell you what, I'll just go to my bed, right? That's what I'll do. I'll go to my bed and I'll leave you and my best pal George to sit down here nice and cosy wozy. Well, let me remind you of something, Linda. This is my game. My game, Jill! <laughs> This harness is a bit shiggly. Gonna have to get the man. Here, this is the longest roller coaster in Europe. Harry. All right, enough, George. I didn't realise that. Harry. I thought the one in Disneyland would have been a lot longer than this. No, no, the one in Disneyland has got one less. Um... Harry. For God's sake, hold on a minute, George. What is it, Linda? I'm just saying this harness is loose. Rubbish. Give yourself peace. Carry on, George. No, I'm just saying the one in Disneyland's got one less twist and it's about 30 feet shorter. Woohoo! Harry! Don't want to know interrupt us. Can you not see we're trying to have a conversation? What is it? 
saying this harvest is the fruit of your seatbelt, whatever you call it. Restraint! Well, whatever you call it, doesn't fit right. That's right, George, isn't it? The restraint is called. Yes, Harry, they call it a restraint. Don't worry, Linda. They're designed to fit pretty much most, you know, people. Did he, just did it feel right? Linda, don't interrupt George when he's trying to put your mind at rest. Carry on, George. I'm just saying, Linda, it's got to be leeway for fat kids and dull folk. Don't worry, they're designed to fit most people. You hear that, Linda? Designed to fit most people. But then again, you have most people. You're that wee bit special. 8,000 people like this roller coaster. Every day, and you have to be the only one that is straight, this big fat. Look at yourself, drawing yourself, hey, throwing your hands up, having a good time. Hey, this thing was built by computer, taking into consideration speed, inertia, centrifugal fusion. And that's not good enough for you. No, no, get the man, get the man. This thing should be, this is should be. Here, get the man, get the man. Really didn't make it there, Linda. George, just in time for the bells. <laughs> let me take your coat. Do you want to let the man get in the door, Linda? I'll take his coat. Well, you the bloody bell hop. Cheers, <laughs> Harry. It's freezing out there. Uh huh. Well, we're going to get snow. Hug my name for the new year. That's right. The weatherman was saying only this morning that. I don't remember, George. I don't remember you getting a job at the Met Office, Linda. <laughs> you, George? No. Harry, it's a new year. A couple of drinks. Keep it light, eh? Have a sausage roll, George. <laughs> Have a sausage roll. It's the only to get the wine, Linda, eh? Come on round to our house and whip it up with a sausage roll. <laughs> Heaven forbid you should take two, George. Oh, these are lovely, Linda. Do you make them yourself? Aye. Oh, aye, she says, eh? Did you catch that one, George? Slaved over them with her own fair hands, she did. Eh? Working in there all day. Do you want to tell George how you made these sausage rolls, Linda? Well, I bought... Hold it right there. You bought what? I bought sausage roll meat. Oh, ready-made sausage roll meat. Made ready for you to buy. Not the pastry. Just roll. Linda, everybody knows you did not make those sausage rolls. And there's George now, frankly embarrassed, and left standing there and made to feel awkward because he now knows you didn't make the sausage rolls. All the guests, everybody who's had a sausage roll knows you didn't make them. What I meant to say is I put the sausage rolls together. Mmm, finally the truth. Linda didn't make the sausage rolls, she put them together. And we through there and tell everybody you made the curtains. I did make the curtains. All right, so you went out, picked a bale of cotton, brung it in here, weaved it on a loom that I can't see anywhere in this house. Well, all right then, a big round of applause for Linda, the master weaver and the putter together of the great sausage roll. Great sausage rolls, Happy Linda, great everybody. sausage roll. <laughs> oh, there it is, the stroke of midnight. Please raise your glasses for Linda, the bell of the bells. Linda! George, cheers. There you go, Linda. Did you get any ketchup, George? Oh, sorry, no. Oh. Oh. Did you ask George to get you ketchup? No. No, that's right. George was to draw on his powers of extrasensory perception to know. Oh, there's ketchup in there, Linda. Oh, great. <laughs> Look at the lovely wee monkey. <laughs> Look at the lovely wee monkey. I don't see a monkey in there, Linda. Do you see a monkey in there, George? Linda, point this monkey out to me and George. Is that no a monkey? Dear that's, oh dear. Uh, that's an orangutan, Linda. Are they no monkeys? Let me paint a wee scenario for you, Linda, right? <laughs> You're sitting there in front of the man himself, Chris Tarn. You've used your 50-50, you've asked the audience, and you've phoned one of your many friends, and you're sitting there in front of Chris saying, yes, Chris, that is my final answer. That is a monkey. Get a rest, Harry. It's an ape, Linda. Are they not just the same thing? What, in the same way that an elephant and a rhino is the same thing because they've got the same skin? In the way that an alligator and a goldfish are the same because they live in the water? 
Or the great bald eagle and the humble wasp because they fly. A good job you weren't in charge of the art wonder. Eh? Well, God's like that. How many animals have you put in the art wonder? And you're like that. Six because they're all the same, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> that's just... right, that's enough, Harry. <laughs> Monkeys have tails, Linda. Apes don't. You're descended for the apes. That's right, you see, way Excuse back... Excuse me a minute, George. You're descended for the apes. Well, where's Linda? She's disappeared and in her place stands Diane Fossey, the renowned authority on primates and their behaviour. Oh, Diane, Diane, I'm Desmond Morris. Let's do lunch sometime and discuss monkeys, seeing you know everything there is to know about our monkey chums. <laughs> Diane, Diane, what am I saying now? <laughs> what am I saying? Come on, we know all the monkey chums. <laughs> well, it doesn't matter what it is. I'm giving it some tea. No, you are not. Read the sign. Do not feed the animals. What is it, Diane Fossey, the blind monkey authority now? Do not feed... <laughs> Linda, give the monkey a banana. Linda, please, give the monkey a banana. Indicate, Linda, indicate. Make your intentions clear. Show the other drivers what you're doing it. Linda, indicate. You don't have to indicate in a slip road, Harry. Linda's coming off already. Jeez, look at the size of this place, it's big. I know, there's a surprise, eh? Warehouse being a big size, that's amazing. <laughs> well, it's the biggest one in Europe. And they've got a full restaurant here as well. Ah, that's why we got in the car and travelled 40 miles so we could have a nice meal out here. Was that your intention, to come out here for a slap-up? Oh, I don't know. Wouldn't you mind a wee burger and a wee soft drink there? Once you get that patio set you're after? Yeah, but that's not the reason we're here, George, is it? No, oh, that's right, Harry. Is this where you're going to park? Oh, that's a grand idea, Linda. That's what today. Park right here, and then we've got a taxi or a train, or a light aircraft, perhaps, up to the warehouse. Or perhaps we could park a little closer. Or is that just a mad, wacky, madcap, cookie-coo idea? <coughs> Linda, there's a spot up the front there. Somebody's coming out. Thanks, George. Right, come on, then. Come on, get the boot down and get the space. Oh, ow. Are you happy now, Linda? Did you not see the speed bump? There's George sitting in the back now with, at best, an egg in his head or, at worst, whiplash. I'm all right, Harry. That's as may be, George. Says he's fine, Harry. Think he's fine, Harry. What are you doing? I'm looking for your stethoscope, Dr Linda. You're wasted in this car, he is. You'd be more of use in casualty with all the carnage is. God's sake. Beep, 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 beep. Beep, 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 beep. Do you hear that? That's your beeper going, Linda, telling you to get out of the car and let Harry drive. <laughs> now we're getting somewhere. There's a spot right there, Harry. I'm ahead of you there, George. Space, if it was you who was driving, it would be their space. But I'm driving, so it's my space. <laughs> you see, Linda, you are a ditherer. Whereas me and George, we would never dither. We would see an opportunity and take it. But no you, that's somebody else's space. You better watch it not taking somebody's space. That's just you all over the back, Linda. Oh! <laughs> take my space, you bastard! <laughs> 